This looks like a very long question, but really the question ends right there. The note that follows is going to tell us how to evaluate the determinant of a matrix, but I'm going to assume we already know this, so we don't really need any of this. But if you're interested, you're more than welcome to pause the video and read it if you don't know how to evaluate the determinant before going on. Anyway, now let's actually get started. Let M sub N be the n by n matrix with entries as follows. For i between 1 and n inclusive, m sub i comma i is 10. For i between 1 and n minus 1 inclusive, m sub i plus 1 comma i is equal to m sub i comma i plus 1 is equal to 3, and all the other entries in the matrix are 0. Before going on, let's try to think about what m sub, who knows, m sub 4 looks like. Once we know how to draw this matrix, we should be able to find any other matrix in this form. Well, we know. The, all the entries in the main diagonal, m sub i comma i is 10. So we know m sub 1 1 is 10, m sub 2 2 is 10, 3 3 and 4 4. And what else do we know? We know m sub i plus 1 comma i is equal to m sub i comma i plus 1. And when i is 1, that's telling us m sub 2 1 is equal to m sub 1 2. And m sub 2 1 is this thing, row 2 column 1, that's this point. And m sub 1 comma 2 is this point, row 1 column 2. And we can go on. When i is 2, we get that m sub 3 comma 2 is m sub 2 comma 3. So we know this value and this value, or what we are talking about. And when i is 3, finally, then we get m sub 4 comma 3 is equal to m sub 3 comma 4. So we are talking about these two values. And of course, all of these are 3. So all of these entries are going to be 3. And we know the rest of them are going to be 0. So we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And using the same reasoning, it's very easy to find m sub 1, m sub 2, and m sub 3, and m sub 3. In fact, m sub 1 is going to be 10, so here we have it. And m sub 2 is going to be 10, 10, and these two are going to be 3. And realize that we have m sub 2 right there in m sub 4. And m sub 3 is going to be 10, 10, 10, 3, 3, 3, 3, and the rest are going to be 0. And once again, we see that m sub 3 is going to be located in the top left part of m sub 4. Anyway, what are we doing with these matrices? We are going to find the determinant. Let d sub n be the determinant of the corresponding matrix m sub n. And we wish to evaluate the summation from n equals to 1 to infinity of 1 over 8 times d sub n plus 1 and that's going to be represented as p over q in simplified form, and we wish to find p plus q. Now, because none of the questions in Amy require calculus, so none of these require calculus, we may conjecture that this infinite summation is probably geometric or telescoping. So we may say this is probably geometric, and who knows, it may be telescoping, telescoping, so one way of quickly finding the answer, of course it's not a formal way, is to just experiment with some of the m sub 1, m sub 2, and m sub 3, try to find some pattern, either geometric or telescoping, and use that to finish the problem. Of course, we are going to be formal and justify why the pattern actually extends on and on and on, but for the sake of exploration, let's try it out. Let's try finding determinant of matrix 1, determinant of matrix 2, and matrix 3, and see if we see any pattern. Well, determinant of this matrix, that's 10. Determinant of the second matrix, that's 10 squared minus 3 squared, also known as 91. And this matrix, this one takes a bit more work, that's going to be 10 times determinant of 10, 3, 3, 10, minus, I'm expanding on the first row, minus 3 times determinant of 3, 3, 0, 10. So 3, 3, 0, 10, and this is obviously 10 times, and we see that that's determinant of matrix 2, that's D2, we see that, 10, 3, 3, 10, 10, 3, 3, 10, and we know that's 91, 
And what's this? That's 3 times 3 times 10. So simplifying this gets us 910 minus 90 or 820. And of course, the value we're looking for or not the determinants themselves, but we care about 1 over 8 times the determinant plus 1. So let's look at those. So we have 1 over 8 times the determinant 1 plus 1 in this case is 1 over 81. 1 over 8 times the determinant 2 plus 1 is going to be determinant 2 is 91. 91 times 8 is 728. Add 1 and we get 729. And you should immediately realize that we are multiplying by 1 9th to go from 1 over 81 to 1 over 729. How about D3? 1 over 8 times D3 plus 1 is going to be, I'm running out of space, 1 over 8 times 820 plus 1. 8 times 820 is 6560. Add 1 to that, we get 6561. And it's pretty easy to verify that 729 times 9 is indeed 6561. So we are multiplying by another 1 ninth. So you may conjecture, and of course this is not a formal proof, so you may say this may be an infinite geometric series, so the value is going to be a over 1 minus r, such that the first term is 1 over 81, and the common ratio is 1 ninth. And plugging that in, we get 1 over 81 over 1 minus 1 ninth, which is 1 over 81 over 8 ninth, also known as 1 over 72. So you may say, it looks like p plus q, we have a p over q, p plus q is 1 plus 72 or 73, and it turns out we are right, it is 73. And this summation is indeed an infinite geometric series, but obviously we have not proved it yet, so let's dive right into the proof. Phew, I accidentally deleted everything I wrote, so I wrote them down again, and hopefully this time it is more organized than it was before. Anyway, before we begin with the proof, it's imperative that we realize that D3 can be written in terms of D1 and D2. Specifically, we have D3 being 10 times 10, 3, 3, 10, and that's obviously D2. So 10 times D2 minus 3 times, 3 times 3, 3, 0, 10, and we see that that's 3 times 10, and we see that 10 is the determinant of the first matrix. So we have D3, so we have D3 being 10 times D2 minus 9 times D1. Let's see if this extends to D4. Well, D4 is going to be 10 times determinant of this matrix, and that's obviously D3 by the symmetry of how the matrix is constructed. So 10 times the determinant of matrix 3 minus 3 times. So now we are going to have 3, 3, 0, 0, 10, 3, 0, 3, 10. And because we have two zeros in the first column, we can expand along the first column to get 3 times 3 times the determinant of 10, 3, 3, 10 when we delete these two. And of course, the determinant of 10, 3, 3, 10 is D2. Let's review really quickly. We got this 10 from the first 10 and D3 because we have D3 residing right there. And the first three is coming from this three. And when we delete the first row and second column, we have this matrix left. And we take out another three. And we are going to have determinant of the second matrix left. So once again, we get D4 is 10 times D3 minus 9 times D2. And of course, you can extend this reasoning to generalize this for any D sub n. So we get, so we see that D sub n is a 10 times d sub n minus 1 minus 9 times d sub n minus 2 for n greater than or equal to 3. And of course, we know d sub 1 is 10 and d sub 2 is 91. So we have discovered this recursion formula. And what do we want to prove? We want to prove that 1 over 8 times d sub n plus 1 forms a geometric series. So we want to show that this is an infinite geometric series. And one way of doing that is by proving 
that a times d sub n plus 1, so a times d sub n plus 1 is 9 times a times d sub n minus 1 plus 1. So what we are asserting is that a times d sub 2 plus 1 is going to be 9 times a times d sub 1 plus 1, and a times d sub 3 plus 1 is going to be 9 times a times d sub 2 plus 1, and so on. So let's try proving this statement. And of course, we care about n greater than or equal to 2 because we start with d sub 1. And if we rearrange this, we get a times d sub n plus 1 is 72 times d sub n minus 1 plus 9. And take away 1, divide by 8. And we are going to get that d sub n is equal to 9 times d sub n minus 1 plus 1. So we want to prove this assertion given this recursive formula. And that's actually very easy to do. I'm going to use induction. So for base case, for base case, we see that d sub 2 is equal to 91. And we see that 91 is 9 times d sub 1 plus 1 because d sub 1 is 10. So we indeed have our assertion being true for n equals to 2. Now let's go to inductive case. We are going to start by assuming that d sub n is equal to 9 times d sub n minus 1 plus 1, and we want to show that our assumption is going to imply that d sub n plus 1 is equal to 9 times d sub n plus 1, and this is actually very easy to do, because we know d sub n plus 1 by our recursive formula is 10 times d sub n minus 9 times d sub n minus 1, so we know that 10 times d sub n minus 9 times d sub n minus 1. And by our assumption, if you rearrange this just a bit, we get 9 times d sub n minus 1 is equal to d sub n minus 1, just rearranging this. So we know this is 10 times d sub n minus d sub n minus 1. And of course, that's 9 times d sub n plus 1. And we have completed mathematical induction. So we know our assertion has been proven for n greater than or equal to 2. Or stated another way, we have proven that we indeed have infinite geometric series with first term 1 over 81, common ratio 1 9th. So our answer is 1 over 72. So our answer is 1 over 72. So p plus q is... 73. And because it's Amy, we are going to write the leading zero as well.